one of the first instructions you get in practicing concentration is that if you notice you've wandered away from the breath, you try to come back as quickly as possible. And just because it's a basic instruction or something early on doesn't mean that it's something to forget. It really is important because you not only strengthen your concentration, you also gain insight into your thoughts as you try to drop them. Some people think that you have to stay with a thought for a long time and watch it and analyze it to really understand it. But that's not always the case. You learn about the process of thinking by dropping it. And in the course of dropping it, you see what little strings are left. It's like cutting a lotus stem, and you pull one part away from the other part, and these little strands connect them for a while. There are little strands in your thoughts that will try to hold you there. And as you try to cut them, that's when you begin to understand, well, this is what made that thought so interesting. You don't have to stay with the thought to understand the process of why the mind is getting involved with these things. You actually learn a lot by cutting things away as quickly as possible. You notice that the mind is churning out thoughts. It's like a child playing with soap bubbles. You blow the bubbles and they float away. And it's like you want to get into the soap bubble because there are all these interesting patterns in the bubble. You want to see how far you can go with it. And all of them burst. And when some of them burst, it's not all that bad, but some of them really can give you a lot of trouble. They burst over a patch of thorns, and there you are, plunked down on the ground of the thorns. So you want to understand this process of bubble blowing without getting into the bubbles. You're looking at the process and all the Buddha's ways of dealing with distracting thoughts give you insight into these processes. The first one simply is you've noticed you've picked up an unskillful object, you drop it. Replace it with a more skillful one. This emphasizes the point that you really do have a choice. You're not stuck with whatever comes up. Lots of different things could come up, and you learn to choose the ones that are most skillful. That's an important lesson in karma right there. There are lots of different potentials that could come up at any moment, and you have the ability to choose which ones you're going to emphasize. So that's an insight you gain into the thinking right there, that just because a thought has come into the mind doesn't mean that you have to live with it. You can pull out immediately. The second technique is to think about the consequences of unskillful thinking. You find that something keeps coming back again and again and again. You ask yourself, where is this going to lead me? And you think about it in whatever ways you, you can that make you realize you don't want to go with that thought. It's a waste of time. One of my favorite ones is to think about, if this were a movie, would you pay to see it? But it goes deeper than that. You think about lust for days on end. Where is it going to take you? You think about anger for days on end. Where is it going to take you? So why get involved with it at all? You learn to step back and realize that your thoughts really do have consequences. So you don't want to encourage them just because they're, they're fun to be with for a while, because the consequences can be pretty bad. That's another insight you get. The technique where you simply ignore them. It can be chattering away, but you don't have to go there. This gives you some insight into the committee of the mind, realizing there are lots of different selves and there are lots of different becomings. Lots of little different bubbles are being blown all the time. And again, just because something is there, you don't have to go with it. And you don't have to get involved. Sometimes the, the thought will try to get you involved simply by being so outrageous that you try to stomp it out. And it's got you. You're already sucked into the bubble. So you stay on the outside. 
the technique of relaxing thought formation. When you get sensitive to the breath energy in the body, you begin to realize that when a thought arises in the mind, there's going to be a little marker in the body, a little spot of tension that you use to remind yourself, okay, this is the thought I'm going to stay with. When you notice a thought comes in, but there's a pattern of tension, say, in your arm or in your shoulder, someplace in your stomach, if you see that they arise together, okay, try to dissolve that pattern of tension, that pattern of tension with the breath. And the thought will go away because it has nothing to act as its foothold. This gives you some insight into the way things happening in the body are connected with ha things happening in the mind. In fact, the more quickly you see this connection, you get to the point where there's just a little stirring in your range of awareness, and it's hard to say whether it's mental or physical. But the mind makes a decision, okay, this is a thought about X, and then you go riding with the thought. That happens fairly early on in the, in the process. And the more quickly you can drop the thought, the more clearly you'll see that stage in the process. So as soon as there's any kind of stirring, you just breathe right through it, breathe right through it, and that prevents a lot of these thoughts from arising. The Buddha's fifth technique, where when nothing else works, you put your tongue against the roof of the mouth, clench your teeth, and just tell yourself, I'll just crush my mind with my mind. In other words, I will not let that thought come up. This, of all the methods, is the one that uses the least discernment, but it teaches you an important lesson, which is that as your meditation progresses, it's not the case that you will never need the basic methods ever again. Just because one method seems gross or coarse, it's not the case that once you've gone into the sixth grade, you, have to, you can forget what you learned in the first grade. Sometimes you have to bring your first grade lessons to use in the sixth grade. It's the same with meditation. Sometimes the really gross techniques are the only ones that are going to work. You can't say, well, my mind is now getting more and more refined. I can't use those anymore, or it's a regression to use those techniques. Don't think in that way. You use what you've got to use. And this is an important lesson in discernment as well. So the ability to drop a thought very quickly is an important part of developing both concentration and discernment. A bubble gets blown and you watch it from the outside. You don't get inside it. You see the process of bubble blowing. You begin to understand. If you stop it more and more quickly, you understand where it's coming from. Otherwise, you get engrossed in the colors of the bubbles and you want to get in. Especially when the thoughts are about dharma, you can give yourself a whole dharma discourse while you're sitting here. In other words, you're not really looking at the breath, you're going off on some dharma world. Regardless of what the content of the thought is, you want to get able to pull yourself out. Because the real understanding is understanding the process, how these things happen. The content is pretty irrelevant. It's in seeing the process that you actually gain discernment. And again, the best way to see the process is to try to stop it as quickly as you can. Get back to the breath. You'll be surprised at what you learn simply in doing that. <laughs>